Okay, guys. Um, I'm gonna speak in English, so Steven can understand me too. I am a middle child of five children. I have an older brother, older sister, older brother, me, younger sister, younger brother. Um, I, I was born and raised here, Philadelphia. I love Philadelphia. I think it's one of the greatest cities in the U.S. I wouldn't want to live anyplace else. I did live in California for two years, mm -hmm. and um, I liked it, but I'm glad to be back in Philadelphia. Question simple. What do you think about Americans? What do I think about Americans? <laughs> I think Americans are very arrogant. <laughs> I always tell my guests um, that if they're from another country, that one of the things that a lot of Americans, I believe, think, that when you come to America, you have to speak English. Mm -hmm. However, the arrogant part is when we go to your country, you have to speak English. <laughs> and there are a lot of people who believe that mm -hmm. because they believe that one, if we're coming to your country, we're coming there for tourism. So therefore, we should be able to speak to you. And if you want to sell us something, you have to sell us something and be able to speak English. You are experienced couch surfer, a yes. special experienced um, hoster. You host a lot, how many people? Um, right now, 155. I think you make 156. I mean, some people who are not on couch surfing, they probably be like afraid uh, that some people will get into their house and, I don't know, just break stuff or just make it dirty or something. So, what do you think about it and why do you host so many people and um, why? Why are you doing this? Um, originally, I started because boredom, mm -hmm. and I've always been fascinated by cultures, um, our cultural differences between people, and I was looking to improve something in my life, which was I have a lot of free time, so I figured, you know what, let me try to learn Spanish again. And as I was searching the internet, I found Couchsurfing. Mm -hmm. And I saw the reviews, I saw Time, you know, Time Magazine, everything. I thought this was legitimate, so I joined, and I didn't get my, I joined in December 2012, and I didn't get my first guest until February 2013. Because you had no reference, right? Possibly, that more than likely it, and I was really new. Sometimes people don't want to stay with people who are new. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I waited, and... Then eventually I got my first guest, and my first guest was not the best guest. Tell, tell um, about him. Well, he basically, um, I think he was more homeless than, <laughs> than uh, someone who actually had a place to live. Uh, I think he was living out of his backpack, and he smelled, and he had lots of layers of clothing on, so that was a problem. And he, I offered to wash his clothes, and then I offered him something to eat, and then he started drinking my alcohol, and his whole purpose was to get drunk so he could go to sleep. But then I let him use my computer, and I forgot to put him in as a guest account, and he, while we're sitting here, he said uh, he saw the pictures from my sister's wedding. Mm -hmm. That was on my Facebook page. Oh. So he had gone into my Facebook page. So I knew then, let me keep an eye on him. So that's a really bad couch surfing experience. Yeah, that was yeah. the first one. Yes, yes. And then when he was eating, he was eating tuna fish and it was falling out of his mouth and hitting on the, hitting the counter and the floor and I was like, "Oh, why am I doing this?" And then he uh, the next day I was I could not get him out of my house fast enough, so I took him to the bus stop. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to use my computer again, he wanted to use my phone, and I said, "No, no, I think we're good. I know where the place is." So and um, but you didn't give up. No, no. I, 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 I specifically said to myself, that is not going to be the experience that you remember. You have to try this again. Don't let this color your decision. Mm -hmm. So I uh, hosted a guy from Denmark who was fantastic. Uh, it was the best couch surfing experience. He was nice. He was friendly. Um, I was in my office and he, before he left, I got a call from the receptionist. Somebody left a package for me, mm -hmm. and he got me a gift. He wow. remembered where I said I worked from one small conversation, and he brought a gift to me. Great. So I thought that was great. Yeah. 
So, what is your most memorable guest? Yeah. My most memorable guest was a guy from South Korea. Uh -huh. And he was just a ball of energy. I mean, literally, he was like bouncing off the walls. <laughs> and he was following, following me around the house like a puppy. Every time I turned around, he was right behind me. He always wanted to help me do something. Um, he would... He would dance, he would just, he would sing, he would just, if I, you know, were cooking dinner, he wasn't cooking, he would be in the kitchen trying to help the other guests, and I kept yelling at him like he was a little boy, get out of the kitchen, there, either, you're, you shouldn't be in the kitchen. So he was, um, he was just an interesting person, and he was always revved up. He revved was always, up. like, raring to go, running. It's uh, sort of like Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> That's what he reminded me of. All right. There, there are th things that black people think about white people, and white people think about black people. All right. For example? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> up through slavery, a lot of white people uh, thought black people smelled. Mm -hmm. So, or they were like more like apes, which obviously isn't true. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we used to say as children about white people was that when they got caught in the rain, they smelled like wet dogs. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, you know it's not true, but you know, kids think this, you know, kids tell each other stuff and you believe it. That's interesting. Can you, can you have more examples of these? We, black, blacks make fun of whites and certain things and obviously whites make fun of blacks yeah. and certain things. So we were talking about horror movies. Uh -huh. You know, that's why you don't really see blacks in horror movies because we're not going to get a flashlight and go outside if we hear noise. Where in horror movies, you see the white people do that. Um, we're we'll pack our bags and leave before we get <laughs> we go outside. But the, but the black people die first in the right. movies, right? That's why they have to kill us all first because we're not going to do what the, the normal stuff that would happen in the movie. <laughs> They're just going to catch us off guard and kill us. What other difference like this you can tell you can see? Um, well, we talked about the, the I wish and I hope mentality, mm -hmm. where a white person would say, I hope no one's sitting in my seat if I'm going to that concert, where a black person would be a little bit more defensive to say, I wish somebody would be sitting in my seat, so mm -hmm. they can confront the person. So, um, and then, of course, the myth that blacks always talk in movie theaters. It's, that is a stereotype that is true, <laughs> especially if you go and see certain movies, but you also notice that it's not just white people. I mean, they're not just black people. There are some other groups that will talk mm -hmm. in movies. They'll talk back to the screen. Now, the joke is we will stand up and yell at the screen and point at the screen and throw stuff at the screen. Some of that is true, <laughs> um, but not all true. Um, because the community I grew up in was a mixed community. Mm -hmm. Um, however, the blacks lived on one side of the street and the whites lived on the other. So there was a main street that div divided us. And there were a few white people who lived in our neighborhood, but primarily the white people lived on the other side of this road. So um, I'm sure we learn things as children to basically be wary of. You know, if we're doing something in the white community, act a certain way. So one of the um, one of the things that blacks um, will say is, if white America has a cold, black America has the flu, mm -hmm. which simply means that if it's something's bad for white people, it's much worse for black people. So it's bad for white people, but it's really bad. For black people. N-word. Yes. This is so which funny. Which I do not use. This is so funny that white people cannot use it, but the black people use it a lot. Right. So, um, I just don't, I just don't even know how to ask. Just like, well, why is that? How, how this thing can be? Like, well, it's... It